Thank you, family and close friends, for participating in this intimate service. Thank you for being a part of this moment that will be shared later virtually with so many others who wish they could be here, and yet you are representing them in this exact moment. I am Dan Collison. I'm a pastor. I have the privilege of being Mike Collison's younger brother. And it is an honor, per his request, for me to lead the service today and to help us in this moment Remember both with sorrow and hope that we gather today to remember the dear life of Logan James Collison. We're here to reflect upon all that God poured into the life of Logan and consequently all of the lives that are touched and were touched by his time on this earth. With deep sorrow, we realize we had to say goodbye way too soon. We lost a son, a brother, a nephew, a cousin, a soldier, a roommate, a college peer, and a friend. It is fitting in this moment as we begin to honor Logan's life in this collective moment of pause, and as we commit him to God, and as we mourn, that we do so in the spirit of the words of poet W.H. Auden when he said, it is time to stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking, and let the mourners come. To so many here, Logan was their north, their south, their east and west, their working week and their Sunday rest, their noon, their midnight, their talk, and their song. Please pray with me. Almighty God, creator of all that is, we lift our prayers of sorrow to you today. We expose our raw emotions to you today. We believe Logan is with you and safe and content and whole and free. And our assurance in his eternal hope is a deep and abiding comfort. And yet his passing from us to you has singed our souls. We feel that his time with us was way too short. And so we have gathered today to weep and to bring our grievances and our grief to you. So hear our prayers. Provide us the necessary healing of our hearts. God of all eternity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be near us in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. And now Mike will come and offer tribute. Late summer, 1999. The light of two small comets came into view. Comet C, overshadowed by the fanfare of recent Halley's and hale -Bopp, with its short tail, still briefly passed our planet, bringing its own unique signature of beauty and light. August 14, 1999, Logan James Collison entered the home of Michael and Linda Collison in Grand Rapids, Michigan with an even greater brightness and beauty. His sisters, Rachel and Alyssa and brother Ryan gathered to welcome their little brother. Infant Logan was dedicated and baptized at Orchard Hill Reformed Church. The week of 9-11, the Collisons took an interstate leap of faith and moved to Little Chute, Wisconsin, where Mike began a long season of pastoral work with the Appleton Community Evangelical Free Church. Logan's early years were formed deeply in the home. The family pursued a vigorous home education. The Collison Family Homeschool, it was remarkable. It was lively. It was a creative learning environment. 
and it was rich with the deep family relationships and interactions. His brothers and sisters being his classmates and his parents his teachers. The church family and youth group were integral to Logan's faith journey. As a middle schooler, Logan stood and publicly shared of his trust in Jesus Christ as his Lord, Savior of his life, and he was rebaptized at ACFC. Logan was extensively involved in the vast array of church programs, groups, work trips, and community serving projects at places like Country Crossings, Minneapolis, St. Louis. He regularly made a joyful noise playing cajones and hand percussion in worship services. Mike, Ryan, and Logan, about 10 years ago, began building cajones and hand percussion as out of the drawer percussion, fully immersing themselves in the entrepreneurial adventures of playing, designing, building, promoting, showing, and selling drums. And I will tell you, Logan's great joy was playing the conga cajones that he built. At 14, Logan decided to complete his schooling at Little Shoot High School. Defying all the harbingers of concern about the school transition, Logan brought his fire and passion for life to the Little Shoot High School Mustang community, engaging and taking the student body by storm. He used his strength and speed in athletics, but of greater note, he shared his heart, building relationships with fellow students and many teachers. By senior year, this homeschooled dark horse was picked as the homecoming king. During this time, he loved working at Golden's recycling scrapping metal. Logan chose the University of Wisconsin for his college education. And with his signature style and energy, he enlarged the community of his heart with numerous new college friends. The life of a comet is one of constant motion. Logan, no less. Light in motion. He joined the ROTC program and made the decision to join the National Wisconsin National Guard. He was sworn in as an infantryman fall of 2017. Private Collison completed basic training and advanced infantry training in the summer of 2018 and was deployed to Afghanistan with a 2127 unit out of Green Bay. He drove an MRAP vehicle while stationed at Forward Operating Base Fenty and there he volunteered extensively with the USO sharing his irrepressible shimmer and warmth with his fellow soldiers. We put his badge on there, his collie badge that he used on his picture. And he was warmly welcomed home by all Thanksgiving of 2019. Winter of 2020, Logan enthusiastically returned to Oshkosh and is studying to be a high school history teacher. He immersed himself in drawing and art, designing and getting beautiful tattoos, body art, all over. Jiu-jitsu, workouts and swimming to stay fit, he vigorously reconnected with his roomies and friends. For some lives, one name just isn't enough. Logan had many Logs, Logie, Logie Bear, Collie, Collie Baby, Battle Buddy, Drum Monkey, Brother, Best Friend, and I know there's a bunch more out there. Colorful descriptors of Logan are plentiful, fiercely independent. dependable, 
selfless. Hardworking. Optimistic. Caring. Charismatic. Storyteller. Strong. Influential. Inspiring. A servant. Musician. Artist. Entertainer. And always a treasure. <clears throat> Logan wrote this to our family before he passed away. He began with the most important book. Scripture, the Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God... He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord washes away my sins and I am made free through him. I want everyone to take comfort that I am no longer in pain. I am no longer suffering. Instead, I am in heaven happy. I am so free. Know that I am finally happy. I love you all. January 19th, 2021. Logan went home into the arms of his loving Heavenly Father. Specialist Logan James Collison was honorably discharged and will be laid to rest right here in the veterans area of Lakeview Memorial Park. He is survived by his parents, Michael and Linda Collison in Hatley, Wisconsin. Listen, Matthew Brandt, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Ryan and Sarah Collison in Denver, Colorado. Rachel Collison, Green Bay. His grandparents, James and Marilyn Sadler in Cabria, Illinois. Sarah Collison, his grandmother, Kalamazoo, Michigan. And many aunts and uncles and cousins. From Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. 
For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, my soul. Thank you, John, and thank you, brother. That was the sermon. And this scripture that was just read was a passage of scripture that my brother Mike did a Bible study with Logan in the weeks prior to this moment. It's a passage of scripture from the Hebrew portion of the Bible that was penned by a man named David. In his youth, David was a wild man. He was the youngest of many siblings. He spent a lot of time outdoors and was known for his hunting and fighting skills. He was passionate about life, God, and leadership. Eventually, David became the leader of an entire nation. And he was also a flawed man who got himself into trouble. In some cases, this combination that David had of being a strong leader and a flawed man got him into a lot of trouble. There is no wonder then that many of the Psalms or the poems of David that are in the Bible and in the Hebrew book of Psalms are David crying out to God for help. When in trouble and desperately isolated, David cried out, God, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I'm lonely and I'm afflicted. When in trouble and confused, he turned to God and prayed, show me your ways, teach me your paths. When in trouble and deeply discouraged, his prayer was, relieve, my, relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. David prayed such prayers often and based upon what we read in the biography of his life and other psalms that David wrote, God heard his prayers and God met him at his points of need. And in Psalm 103 that you just heard, David reflected, and I'm just going to read it again. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But, but, from everlasting to everlasting. By the way, I'm told from professional writers, whenever you see the word but, it erases everything else and resets the truth. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. Now I knew Logan all 21 years of his life, mostly seeing him at large family gatherings and around holidays when he would frequently light up an entire room with gregarious storytelling energy. For great lengths of time, his stamina was unbelievable. And he even had enough stamina after that, even late into the evening, to trash talk fellow card players like me 
in a forehand game of cribbage. And watching him through the years and in recent years, my mind has made some free association comparisons between Logan and King David, a most famous leader in the Hebrew Scriptures, and in specific with Psalm 103, a poet, a leader, a warrior. And David seemed to be wrestling in this text with his mortality in specific and human frailty in general, even as Logan did in his final days. Now, David's ultimate assessment, his but, was that while our mortality is real and our lives are ultimately brief in the larger span of time, every single human life is sacred, remembered, and held for eternity by our Creator's everlasting and unconditional covenant of grace and love. And Logan, even with his wrestling and struggle, he knew this. He knew this well and articulated it even in his last words. And now on the other side of the veil, Logan is living those words. Now we are here, and those who are watching this virtually are also invited. We and all are invited to live that generous God reality as we carry forward Logan's life and memory with us for the rest of our days, even as we will never be the same from the events of this week and will never stop missing him going forward. And on one level, this is a burden because we are supposed to have Logan with us, co-creating life together. And on another level, this is now our sacred entrustment. Because in the 21 years we have known Logan, and for the various amounts of time that friends and colleagues and peers and family have known Logan, we have been changed for the better because of who he was to us and who he will be living in our memory for the rest of our earthly lives. So to help us in our sacred work, I mean, Mike has already listed so many of the qualities of who he is. And they're more than post-it notes. <laughs> These are like truth statements that as he said them and spoke them into the air, I was receiving them as I know you were. And let me just contribute and maybe add, and you're going to hear some overlap here from a list that Mike and Linda gave me just a few days ago to describe Logan and let us hold these as gifts and sacred entrustments from Logan and his life to us as we carry with him. We carry him with us into our future. These words, bright light, best friend, servant, influential, brother, artist, storyteller, strong, inspiring, passionate, treasure, and hero. Now, if this work all seems too unbearable in this moment, I invite us to hear direct encouragement from another passage of Scripture that Mike and Logan studied in recent weeks that is found in the New Testament of the Bible, written by Paul, another soul who wrestled mightily with the big questions of life and faith and relationships. And he wrote this to a church that faced much discouragement and suffering as well. And I will end my comments with these scripture verses. Paul wrote this. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. We ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption and the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us through wordless groans. And God, who searches our hearts, knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with God's will. What then shall we say in response to these things? Well, if God is for us, who can be against us? God, who did not spare God's own Son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. No one. Christ Jesus, who died 
more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor, angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Please pray with me. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Logan James Collison. Before Logan was ours, he is yours. For all that Logan has given us to make us what we are, for that of Logan which lives and grows in us, in each of us, and for his life that is now in your hands entirely, we do give you thanks even in our sadness. And as now, as we must surrender Logan back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness and replace our sorrow with the comfort of knowing of Logan being in your presence at this very moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
a brother, best friend, and heroes to so many. Our beloved Logan, light in motion, has passed from our visible view. But, but, his treasured presence and life, it will never be taken from any of us. Never. But I will tell you, it's now, it's now our work. It's our work to multiply that light that Logan brought to us with the people that are in our lives. Honor his memory by doing likewise. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. Thank you everyone again for being here in this sacred moment. Almighty God, into your hands we commend your son Logan, James Collison. in sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This body we commit to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. God, we wish we weren't here right now. We wish that we didn't need to put Logan to rest here. And yet we must surrender him to you now. And we trust that Logan is with you, even as he remains with us in our hearts. We will do our part, Lord, to hold him and all that he's given to us. And when our grief and mourning linger, we lean into your embrace and the knowledge that you hold Logan and hold all of us on both sides of the veil of life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. And whomever lives and believes in me will never die. Almighty God, source of life and breath, giver of our Lord Jesus Christ, comfort our hearts through Jesus' words. Strengthen us now with your presence. And may your grace and peace be ours both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> We do not walk this road alone. God, we need you desperately. May you split heaven open and touch the earth so that for a moment we can turn our heart to the one who holds us all. God, you say to knock and the door will be opened. Right now, I am pounding on the gates of heaven. God, hear our prayers. Light up this world so brightly that everyone can know that Jesus saves, that heaven is for everyone. May you send your angels down. May the trumpets sound. My brother is gone, but Jesus is alive, ready to wipe every tear away on this darkest of days. May we lift up our hands and hearts and heads to the almighty God of everlasting joy, of comfort, of peace, and love. Light up this world so that none of us may walk in darkness.
Amen. When Logan came into this world, August 14, 1999, I was six years old. However, I felt much older. Growing up, Ryan and I were close in age, and he was my best friend, and Rachel wanted to copy everything I did. But Logan was my baby brother. I instantly felt a sisterly urge to hold and protect him, and show him all the beautiful and exciting things that this world has to offer. I always wanted to hold him close, but Logan, aka Logs, was always a ball of energy who did what he wanted to do, even as I, the older sister, tried to get him to play along with me. The best example of this is the many shows I directed during our childhood. One in particular was a show about fishing and how lying could get you into lots of trouble. I cast Logan as the captain of the boat. At some point during the show, Logan got upset about something, although I can't remember what it was. However, with a little help from my siblings and the audience, my parents, we were able to console him and Logan the boat captain became the star of the show. As we grew up, I directed many more family skits where Logan's exuberant sweet smile was the cutest show-stopping part of the entire performance. I remember fondly when we acted out the story of the Billy Goat's Gruff, where Ryan, who was playing the troll, asks, Who is that tromping over my bridge? Logan answers in his tiny high-pitched voice, It is I, the baby Billy Goat's Gruff. The audience's hearts and I melted. Logan always knew how to captivate people and stole many hearts with his charming smile. Logan constantly wanted to be a part of everything his older siblings were doing. Therefore, when Ryan wanted to do a show where he played Harry Houdini, Logan wanted to be the one who threw the punch at Houdini's stomach, which ultimately killed Houdini. We were homeschooled and read a lot of books. I also fondly remember playing the mom character in a show titled The Dramatic Life of a Fifth Grader. Ryan played the lead, and Logan and Rachel were the supporting siblings. Logan loved playing along as I fed him his lines in a loud, not-so-subtle whisper. He was spontaneous and witty, so you never knew what crazy thing he would say or do next. Growing up with Logan was never dull and always full of surprises. Even from a young age, Logan was a creative soul. His Lego creations, Lincoln Log buildings, and block towers were unrivaled. I still marvel at his amazing ability to create and invent so many different things simply from his brilliant imagination. His artwork is brimming with beautiful, playful, provocative, and powerful imagery that echoes Logan's imaginative mind and personality. Growing up, all of us siblings did everything together. We especially loved dressing up in crazy, colorful costumes. Logan was such a goofy character, making accents and voices to match his outfit. Halloween was always an exciting holiday because our parents let us choose our own costumes. We would then take a special trip to Goodwill to create our unique vision. Some of Logan's most memorable Halloween costumes were Davy Crockett, Piggly Wiggly, a cowboy, a ninja, Dalmatian puppy, and Bob the Builder. As a homeschooled family, we loved to read and learn together on a daily basis. As an avid reader myself, I especially loved reading aloud to my younger siblings, including Logan. I loved when we were all snuggled on the couch reading our favorite Berenstein books together. Logan would smile and point at the colorful pictures as we traveled to different worlds through the power of imagination and inventive stories. I also have so many special memories when I would choose favorite Christmas book to read on Christmas Day. When Logan was a little older, we actually picked out a book series written by John Grisham titled Theodore Boone, Kid Lawyer. Logan enjoyed the action and mystery within the stories, and we bonded while reading many pages together. 
I can also recall many laughter-filled mornings sitting at the counter eating bowls of cereal, flipping through Logan's favorite comic books, especially Calvin and Hobbes and Get Fuzzy. I cling to these wonderful special memories as I remember the amazing person Logan was. My brother was such a kind and caring man. He always told the best stories and the funniest one-liners. He always knew just how to walk into a room and have everyone notice him. He was such a fun and loving person. He was also at times just so wise, and I enjoyed being with him on trips, being homeschooled together, and learning new things with and from him. Most recently, he was with Matthew and Rachel and I, helping us move into our new home. I feel so blessed that he gifted us with his love and support in moving my husband and me into a new chapter of our lives. He was always such an amazing servant to others and an excellent listener, and I can still feel his last hug to me before he was called away and left to serve in Wisconsin at his post in the National Guard. Logan was my youngest brother, and I will forever miss his amazing smile in my life. I am so proud of him for everything he's done, for how much he accomplished in his life, and for how much he impacted the lives of so many family and friends. Logan, I miss you so much and I am incredibly grateful and blessed to be your sister, to have been a part of your life, and to have had your wonderful smiling soul as a part of mine. I hope and pray that you are at peace, and that someday I will see you once more with your beautiful smile. I love you so much, Logan. When Logan was born, I became a big sister. As we were the younger two, we had a special bond that continued throughout our lives. We would stay at home while the older siblings would go on youth group outings, go on work trips, and get to stay up later because they were older. Logan and I were first playmates as Alyssa and Ryan started school. We would play with various toys such as Legos, blocks, and Lincoln Logs. Logan would create whole other worlds with whatever material he could get his hands on. We would enjoy watching Scooby-Doo and Saturday morning cartoons. We all loved going to the library so we could would check out all the Where Are You Scooby-Doo seasons as many times as we could. Logan and I would joke about how they were all the same episodes, but they were still entertaining. As we got older, I was able to buy all the seasons for him and he would still watch them all throughout high school and college. Before he left for Afghanistan, we had time to watch some episodes together. We laughed so much. Our family were no strangers to traveling. All of our family lived out of state, so we did a multitude of road trips. Logan and I would sit in the very back seat and play little games of checkers with a travel set, watch for different license plates with the game, competing against one another for the most license plate spot first. And we would quiz each other over the state capitals and other trivia. We had our own little fun being the furthest from the parents, Logan was amazing at coming up with new games over the many miles that we traveled. I am so thankful that Logan was able to go on one last road trip with me to Michigan. We were partners in crime growing up. However, as much fun as games and playing was, we eventually had to start homeschooling. We were all classmates, the four of us, learning together, but Logan and I would be doing a lot of our work together. We had to do a lot of memorization, Logan and I would quiz each other on the different wars throughout history, poems, and even the Gettysburg Address. I was two years ahead, but some of our schooling would line up. Science, history, and geography were some of the subjects that we would sit together at the dining room table with Dad and listen as he showed us how the world was created. When we weren't in the classroom, and we, we would be playing with our next door neighbors. Katie and John, were our best friends growing up. We played so many games together, kickball, four square, and chalk drawings, and our personal favorite, hobos. We would pretend to be hobos by sitting out on a blanket in the summertime and having our own little family. Logan and Katie were the parents, and John and I were the children. We would even play dead whenever a car passed by. Logan was kind of the leader of our little group, as he loved being outside even on the coldest days. As we started to grow up into middle school, we started to branch out and make other friends in our youth group at church with our dad as the youth pastor. Logan was what people called a social butterfly. He was so quick to make friends and make people laugh. 
He created his own little posse or squad of followers. During youth group, he always had a funny comment or could create a game out of anything. However, when the time came for us to pray and talk about a Bible verse, he would listen intently and share about what God was doing in his life. He became a strong leader to those who watched and listened to him. He brought this quality into his high school life as well. As he started high school at Little Shoe High School, he faced challenges that impacted his whole life. He now had to take tests and sit for hours listening to teachers, as well as doing more homework when he got home. He took this all in stride. Logan was involved in a different sport every season of every year. Baseball, wrestling, cross country, and track were the sports that he continued to challenge himself all throughout his high school career. I can't say much for some of the stories and moments that he had with all of his new friends that he made, but he still had the leadership quality that made people want to see what you would do next. Even when he went to basic training and deployment, Logan had a presence about him that brought people together. I loved growing up with Logan. He was my first friend and playmate. We would share secrets and discuss life together. He was my little brother, who I always wanted to be available to, who I drove around to various places, and who I tried to protect. I can't believe he is gone. I will always remember him as being the person that I sometimes wanted to look up to, but also be the slightly older person that he could talk to whenever he needed. Logan, you will be missed, and I love you so much. Hi, I'm Ryan Collison. I'm Logan's older brother, and this is my part of his story. There are a number of words I could use to describe Logan, but the strongest bond that he and I shared was as artists. From an early age, I saw the way that Logan could light up a page with characters, characters and worlds that I could never dream of. I can remember how excited I was when Logan started taking an interest into art. We are sitting in church and he leans over and he goes, hey, do you have a pen? I said, of course, take whatever you want. Um, and that's the way it went for many, many mornings sitting in church. We would listen to the sermon, but all the while he and I would have our heads down imagining the weird and wonderful characters that only we could dream up. Logan and I were constantly drawing the margins of notebooks in church, road trips and hotel rooms. He and I were always armed with pen and paper and filling all the spaces that we could. Another deep bond that Logan and I shared was the love of percussion. I was the first to take up drums while Logan was still trying his hand at piano. But when he, he and I finally got to make music together, we started learning hand percussion. He learned to play on the drums our father built called cajones. Still to this day, my most cherished memories of making music was when he and I got to play on stage week in and week out um, in the church band. His skill on Cajon always just made me want to stop and listen to him. It was another place where he and I lived in our own world of creativity. We understood each, other, each other's style and just never questioned it, always worked really well together. But the most sacred space of wild imagination and creativity was, was our bedroom. We had a vintage school desk that was filled with markers and pens that we would sit at. There was a cork board where we would tack anything that sparked our creativity or a memory. But the most iconic space where Logan and I solidified our creative bond was on our large whiteboard. It was a cast off from the church but we cleaned it and bleached all the old dried marker stains off of it and proceeded to make it a living sketchbook. Mom and dad bought us all the colors of the rainbow and dry erase markers and we filled that blank space together. 
I would draw a face and he would come back and put a body on it. I would write my name in some graffiti font and um, he would write his below it. But ultimately we held each piece loosely because we knew at some point we would have to let it go. It would be erased only to be filled with new magic. Logan saw things and felt things on a deeper level. Everything around it, him, inspired him to create. Above all, each one of you watching this now was the reason he kept creating. He was prolific in his artwork on a scale that I'm still trying to understand. He created art not as much for himself, but for you, his friends, his family. Everything from tattoos that people wanted to thousands, literally thousands of late night Snapchat sketches that he would send. Even with the help of friends and family, I don't think any one person could track down all the pieces he created. It is just simply too vast. You may know this, but he did not always find the greatest satisfaction in his own artwork, as many artists do. What truly brought him joy, however, was giving away to all of you I believe I speak for all when I say we cherish every scrap of paper Logan brought to life. But just like the old sketches on our whiteboard, they were temporary. Logan was truly the most amazing person I have ever known. No amount of time with him would have felt like enough. He was just that special. Each one of you watching this now knows that. He was my brother first, but he was a brother to so many that he knew. And I am so grateful to have had a brother that touched as many lives as he did. The stories of his gentle spirit warm my heart as I struggle to deal with his loss. But my father said it best, that the reason why our hearts hurt so much is because of the love that we had for him and that he gave to us. So just as Logan was a light in our lives, let's take the love for Logan James and give it to our friends and family and the world that so desperately needs it. I thank everyone for seeing the brother that I had. He was a beautiful life that will be missed beyond belief. Logan, I love you. And I can't wait until we can make music together again with all the angels in heaven. Thanks. Logan James Collison, Light in Motion. One of the most reverberating echoes at our house during Logan's high school era was this. Gotta run, got places to go and people to see. And go he did. Our bulging photo albums and large digital files offer visual proof of all the places he went. Logan was always in motion. Though it must be noted the secret to Logan keeping his pace was the power naps. Literally anywhere, everywhere it could be gotten. We have a whole file of pictures of nothing but Logan sleeping in funny places. Logan, our youngest, came of age just as digital technology was rapidly advancing. As a family educating four at home, we were committed to limiting distractions and we were late to get high-speed internet. Even the cell phones were pretty basic for the kids. Logan was the youngest to use digital technology and hyper-connector that he was, once he had it, he used it all and used it all the time. Facebook, speed texting with his Blackberry, then Snapchat, and later Instagram for his art. Sorting and choosing some Logan pictures for this video was both beautiful and daunting. I was struck by a few realities. He not only lived a full life, but a life captured by many photos, videos, and selfies. There were over 350,000 Snapchats. Logan had an artist's eye 
and took many pictures of things that captured his imagination, especially in nature, but also museums and art. There's just folders with many things that he found captivating and amazing. Logan never missed an opportunity to perform for the camera. His love of people and life was irrepressible and the pictures remind, but cannot contain his expansive presence. As you see the compiled pictures at the end of this, please know it's just a small and a limited representation of moments remembered in relationships. Some of you have shared words of honor and posted pictures and video you have of, on Logan's Facebook page. We're going to leave it open and as a place of memorial where more can be shared. Logan's first job was a tough gig. He was knocking on doors in the dead of Northeast Wisconsin winter in the snow, bitter cold, and the winter darkness for Weedman Lawn Services. So after that, he traded it in for a hot weather summer job working scrapping metal at Golden's Recycling, where he learned to drive a forklift, even came back, told me that he once learned that he got to operate the crane. Always had, he was filthy head to toe, and uh, had a whole handful of new stories and even some rusty metal treasures that he was able to get. Logan also worked for my company, SureDry, briefly helping formally with the marketing department, hanging door flyers, and alongside of me at home shows and at the Appleton Farmer's Market. Logan had some very special gifts in sales and helping potential customers. Though he was just 18, he was able to generate leads with ease. We learned how to tag team these events with him, smoothly handing off questions that were beyond him to me. As we greeted folks under the sure dry canopy on College Avenue, he'd pick up one of my questions and it would become one of his longest running laughs with me. Now, is that a port or a block wall? Many lols. Informally, Logan helped me with a few projects when I was a new design specialist learning big lessons. He and his friends spent a very sweaty Memorial Day digging four foot deep holes in clay soils for some excavation that I had missed uh, in preparation for a peering project. Mind you, they were paid in bags of quick trip snacks and a big meal out. Uh, he also helped me help a widow in Wisconsin Rapids put in 50 feet of buried discharge line that she could not afford. He did these back aching production projects with all the strength, vigor, and servant's heart he had, but he never missed a chance to razz me about the pain and suffering. Logan was light in motion in his military service. Our family has been strong and dedicated military supporters since Logan was very young. He could be found wearing lots of camo, a favorite well-worn army t-shirt, studying a little extra long on military history and ready for our next trip to a military museum. During Logan's growing up years, Linda actively supported soldiers and Marines through letters and care packages and prayers. Not long after turning 18, he raised his hand and swore an oath. Logan was incredibly proud to serve as an instrument like his grandfather, James Sadler. He was an honorable and faithful soldier and brother in arms to many. Logan's commitment to following Christ over the years was nurtured by his family and church family. He wasn't only my son, he was a kid in my youth group that, was, that I was given the gift and the opportunity to shepherd. To see Logan on a Sunday when he wasn't working the crowd was often spotted behind the conga cajones during music and sketching on the church bulletins during the message. The past three years of distance, deployment, and activations reshaped his participation in a regular faith community. What evolved is that throughout most weeks, he and I had devotional exchanges on Facebook Messenger. I'd share scriptures and prayers and theological study early in the morning, and usually at night, he would respond back with his personal takeaways and questions, which would then often stir further exchanges. I was truly blessed to remain Logan's spiritual mentor. I will cherish his asking, hey pops, what's the good word today? The practical expression of faith and action is sacrificial service on behalf of others. Logan was deeply involved in serving others for his entire life. 
he did not miss jumping into the many opportunities to help in our community, church, and special projects that our life was filled with. He could regale you with rich and hilarious stories of these encounters, but beyond the physical labor, dirty jobs, and adventures in serving, Logan built many beautiful friendships with workers and those served, where he helped, and especially at Country Crossings Community in Appleton, where we spent many years sharing the love of God together, and where he grew up right alongside of those we served. In friendship, Logan was light in motion. To so many, the most cherished piece of what we say goodbye to is Logan the friend. Logan's friends were legion. In fact, the practical reality is there were very few who weren't his friend. He had the gift of being fully present to whoever he was with. The resounding amen of this truth has been heard by us over and over in these days of grief. Neighbors, childhood friends, church family, co-workers, fellow students, teachers, soldiers, Listen to just a small cross-section of words shared by some of the friends that Logan touched. Kali was a ray of sunshine that constantly made people smile, just being in the same room as him. He was truly kind inside and out, and the most genuine person I've ever met. He was family to everyone around him. No matter where they came from, he mattered to all of those around him and impacted everyone around him in the most positive and bright way. Logan was the most personable and loving friend, best friend I've ever had. The most selfless, caring, intelligent, and talented young man I've ever met. Logan, you came to the unit just before our deployment and we instantly became best friends. We became a family. From McCoy to McGregor to Kuwait to Afghanistan and home again, you were always there to put a smile on my face and quite frankly, everyone that was within sight of you. You light up a room like nobody else. I was so lucky to have Logan is a friend when I did. I always admired how sure of himself he was and so sure of his faith. Not only that, I can remember, I can't ever remember seeing him not smiling. He was so positive and joyful. Logan was one of the most caring, hardworking and positive individuals you could have ever met. The best example of this may be unsuspecting individuals reaching out to me after Logan's passing, telling me that Logan literally saved their life exclaiming that Logan was the only one they've ever been able to open up to and that he helped shape them into the person they are today. Logan gave the ear to listen and the shoulder to cry on for people that's needed when they needed it most. And he found a friend in everyone. He understood and knew the differences between individual individuals and expressed to them that it's okay to show your emotions. Again, the best way I can explain Logan's outgoing, charismatic and caring personality is that he was truly a friend to everyone. You could count on Logan for giving your advice or support on whatever was needed. No matter what you were trying to accomplish, if you needed a support team, Logan was all you needed. He was a special kind of person that could bring a smile to anyone's face and completely light up a room the second he walked in. He was constantly radiating positivity and happiness. You could count on Logan for anything, especially a good laugh. I will miss our deep conversations around the fire his always helpful advice, his stories and contagious smile, you will be missed very much. You made such a huge impact on my life and will never be forgotten. You put everyone before yourself. There are no words I can type that will express how much Logan Collison was the light of everyone's life. The amount of support I received is inspiring. He had a trillion friends and his relationship to his family was stronger than anything I've ever seen. Logan was easily the most outgoing and goofy person anybody has ever met, and I wish he were here to see the impact he's made on so many lives. You were like a little brother to me, Kali. You were the brightest lights to shine when things were dark. No matter the time and the place, you would dance, act silly, and make everyone laugh and bring us out of a slump. I loved Logan like a brother and cared so deeply of him that all I wanted for him was to be happy. He was a pretty great friend, that if, you ever, if you've never had a Logan Collison in your life, you were missing out. You were always there for me and I for you. Through every trial and heartbreak, we had inside jokes and messed up sense of humor. You could make me laugh until my stomach hurt. If I needed someone, you would make time for me. You were just so selfless and reliable. You never complained and just rated in joy in Jesus. You saved me in more ways than I can count. 
I think about how radiant you were and I can still feel your smile and happiness surrounding me spiritually even when you aren't here with us physically anymore. You brought so much joy into the world and I will be forever thankful that I got to be with you. It was the joy of Linda and mine to nurture, educate, and raise Logan and then share him with all of you. We never held him back, but we always admonished him, go and do. As he moved out into college in the army and we moved 90 minutes north, our times in person were less frequent. But when we did get together, we loved hearing his stories about all of you and the places he had been and the adventures he had had. We cherished every graced moment we were given with him. And for all our grief and sorrow, we wouldn't trade it for all the knowledge of the joy that Logan lavished on others. This we hold close. The memory of Logan's life and presence will live on in so many people in so many new places. You all will honor his life if inspired by your spirit, you go and do as well. Just happening 
forever.